Okay, here we go. Watched a relatively interesting story this morning about some Boy Scout turned evil drug lord. It very much so sounded like something out of a movie. And it's very difficult to just blindly believe anything. I've been one to question most any information that's ever presented my way. And um, people advertise these stories as though they are real stories and all of these things. But whenever a real life story resembles um, fiction as vividly as these stories do, I tend to especially not believe them. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who harbors those disbeliefs towards these works of fiction or stories or whatever. But it is interesting to me to um, look at it and to observe. And maybe it's a kind of mostly truth little fiction thing but it at times feels more like a recruitment tactic for some law enforcement or um, military thing because we I think especially men but most anybody aspires to do something bigger and better in life and um, for years I've heard people talk about video games being a recruitment tactic for um, military um, like Call of Duty basically is just funded by the military as a means to encourage young men to join the military it's a recruitment tactic and I'm not 100% convinced that that is the purpose of that game but I certainly would not be surprised. I've known several friends of mine who were basically just your average run-of-the-mill gamers who wound up joining the military because they were inspired by these video games they played. And um, obviously they are grossly fabricated as to the amount of glory that one accomplishes in the military. There's not a lot of glory to be had in any given field, really. Um, And I would say that the military is more prone to misery than it is to glory. But this is talking to someone who's from someone who's never been in. But at any rate, I just feel as though um, I really ought to um, question the accounts of these true stories that I watch and really kind of not just wholeheartedly take everything at face value. The story is about some um, young promising guy who turned out to be this horrendous drug lord and it was obviously the video title and thumbnail was right on cue with getting people sucked in it was like how does a boy scout become FBI's most wanted and you're like oh my gosh a boy scout and so you click on it and it's like the dude was a Boy Scout, yes, but that was years before he ventured into his evil schemes, and um, so it's just interesting that um, the paths that people take or what have you, and people who have extreme visions, they're more often than not viewed as villains in this world and although their visions may not be inherently villainous it seems like they always um, 
they always act upon them in villainous ways. And, like, the things that he quoted to stand for are not necessarily things that I feel like anybody would say are inherently bad things to stand for. But the problem is the way in which he executed those thoughts. And it, that's why it reads as just another cautionary tale, because once again it's this same story of somebody who has a vision that isn't all that drastically bad or different than what we would see as a potential vision, and then going off the deep end with it, greed rules a great deal of man, and it will make for a pretty epic downfall. I feel like um, I'm not, well, I don't feel like I am not a religious person, but I do find it to be interesting to observe the seven deadly sins and how they rule one's life. For one, I don't think that pride should be on there. Um, I mean, excessive pride is a problem, sure, but, like, if you say that pride itself is a sin, then people don't take pride in the simple things. And I don't think that that's a, a good operational goal to have. Um, I, for one, don't feel like it is. But I do agree with like greed and gluttony and lust. These are all things that are inherently... Well, aside from lust, maybe, but these are all things that are inherently bad. Greed, gluttony, um, I'm trying to remember what all seven of them are. Greed, gluttony, lust, um, pride, sloth, sloth's inherently bad, um, there's two more that I'm forgetting, and it's funny, as I'm going through them in my head, I'm trying to remember the characters from Full, Full Metal Alchemist, because they have the homunculi are the embodiment of the seven deadly sins. But at any rate, um, there's nothing good that comes from being greedy. There's nothing good that comes from being a sloth or being lazy. There's nothing good that comes from being envious. Did I say envious last time? Um, uh, that's one of the ones I maybe forgot and greed. There's, I already said that one. At any rate, um, something good can come from lust, but when you describe it as lust, it's usually not the good kind. And then, um, something good can come from pride as well. Like, people should have pride in their work and have pride in the things that they do. But you can also be so prideful that you're dying on unnecessary hills. And that's not good. So then, um, what is the issue that plagues people the most? I feel like sloth and greed are up there. But this guy made apparently a billion dollars on this website. And it's like, dude, you could have stopped after the first two million, taken that money, run to some foreign country, and just disappeared. But instead, he kept going. He ran the thing for three years, and um, and eventually got caught. And it's like I've always said that if I could just make my two million, I'd be good. I would do so in a legal way. But um, in the same sense, like that dude could have lived for ages off of the money that he had made in, in even a fraction of the time that he had made it. But he kept going and he kept going and he kept going. And then um, he eventually got caught. The interesting thing to me is they don't talk at all about how he actually laundered the money. Because I feel like, well I guess they're saying because he got paid in Bitcoin, that's how he was able to launder it because they had no way of tracking it at the time. But, um... 
I don't understand enough about cryptocurrency or anything like that to be like, oh, that makes sense. But I would assume that that's how he was able to hide what he was making. Because that would be the first red flag, is they're like, this person is moving mountains of money around. Like, surely we can find someone who's recently moved an entire mountain of money. And, uh, unfortunately, no. But... I think that was because it was all in Bitcoin. But then, of course, like, how do you transition Bitcoin into real currency? Like, if he wanted to cash out, what would that look like? And obviously, like, once again, you can't cash out all at once. And maybe that's the bigger reason why pulling out isn't quite as easy as it seems. Because once you've made 5 million, 10 million, whatever... You've now got to find a way to cash it all out without getting caught. And, like, you could do it gradually in chunks, but, like, you would have to do chunks that aren't going to raise red flags. So it would be, like, $10,000 every couple of months. But that would take years to, <laughs> to get from $10,000 every couple of months to $2 million or whatever your goal is. Um... So, yeah, I guess the end of the day, the, the realist thing to say is don't do illegal activities and just try and be a real, genuine person and earn your money the honest way. Um, and that's kind of what I have to say about that, I guess. It's just interesting, this whole... Of course, they set up the whole situation on how they were going to catch him and I don't wholeheartedly believe in that either like they play like they're good cop bad cop and they're like oh well we couldn't break the law in order to um arrest the guy so we had to do this instead and I feel like a good chunk of that is just them um putting on a front I think the FBI, the government, the powers to be, I think they have the means to do whatever the heck they want, but when they're dealing with small fries, as I would believe that this guy is a small fry in the grand scheme of evil beings in the world, when they're dealing with small fries, they play by the rules so that they can advertise it to the world that they're doing so, but it's like, I have no doubt in my mind that if some horrible person popped up and was just the worst thing on the planet and they believed that was the person and that they would just get them. They're not going to just be like, oh, well, we had to set up this meeting in the library and then we had to get a distraction to get his laptop from him and then apprehend him and we had to get refutable evidence that he had logged in so that we knew it was him. And I was like, nah. I was like, I feel like if this dude was like a global terrorist or something you guys would have just gotten him and been done with it you're not gonna deal with all these pleasantries and um it leads it leads to these stories that are just kind of like awesome movie stories but like is it real and um i always have a hard time with those because we, and maybe we're just so wrapped up in fiction that we refuse to believe these things are real unless we're experiencing them firsthand. Um, but, like, the obvious kind of high that would, um, that would occur from, um, that situation is unbelievable to imagine they said that when they first um, initiated the plan, he probably thought he was just being robbed. And then um, it very quickly turned into an arrest. But, yeah, I don't know. It was an interesting little story to read or to listen to this morning. Um, The truths behind it remain unseen. But I think that it's still... A valuable thing to to note and to understand and 
these are kind of fun little stories to start your day to. It's not my usual thing, but I'll take it. Um, been struggling with this whole compression man advertising thing. I'm starting to get residual views now. And so I put the first two episodes on, um, on, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I made promotions for them. And then, um, from there, I, um, I've got the third episode up and you can watch that one through like the end screen of the second episode and so I've got these people watching the other episodes and they're getting to the end and clicking on episode three so episode three is starting to grow more so organically than the other two are because the other two are completely um paid growth at this point point. That's the other problem is YouTube sees that. And they're like, the only views you're getting are through our promotion. Like, you're not getting any views naturally. And the promotional views you're getting are kind of garbanzo beans. And it's difficult because it's like, am I just building myself into this corner of the only success that I will see is the success that I pay for? And obviously that's not actually success. It's garbage. And how do I convert that garbage into gold? And is it even possible? I don't know the answer to any of these things. And I have to hope that something just kind of works out. But it's hard because it's not something that I'm not... um, interested in. It's not something that I don't want to do. It's just frustrating because I'm tossing a lot of money at it for nothing, really. And so, I don't know. Could be just a major annoyance. Could be just a minor annoyance. Could be any kind of annoyance at all, really. But I wish that I could better understand the market and how to market these things so that because I I just feel like I'm just tanking my success I feel like I'm not helping it at all and like same with um, Instagram I feel like I've gotten to the point now where I'm just paying for people to see things it's not actually getting seen in the natural sense and for that it's disheartened me from creating on that platform and I'm concerned that Compression Man will get the same kind of treatment I love making the episodes, it's fun it's absolutely something that I've always dreamt of doing, making my own cartoon but if it's just being wildly ignored then why am I making it and they're like, well you should make these things for yourself and that's all well and good and I do make things for myself but doesn't change the fact that it would be nice to get out of the rat race. I feel like in some degree we all dream of it. It's just It's more obtainable for some than others. But at any rate, this has been my drive home, or to work, not home. And I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll do it all over again. Bye!